guys want a shot at winning a copy of Call of Duty World War II for the console of your choice for absolutely free, a couple of my friends and I are doing a little giveaway. Link is down there in the description below. Go check it out if you're interested. With it only being less than four weeks away from the launch of Call of Duty World War II, I'm sure a lot of you guys are highly anticipating getting your hands on your copy, grinding out the game and everything like that. And while the beta has provided a little bit of a teaser and kind of wet the whistle for what we can anticipate and what we can look forward to with the full launch, it is something where, of course, it's totally natural to only want more. So with that said, in the anticipation here, building up to the full launch, we're going to give you guys a little bit of a list, maybe perhaps if you want to consider it, that's of weapons that I think are the most reliable so that whenever the launch of World War II happens, you can jump right into the game, pick out those weapons, and totally dominate. So, that said, these weapons are going to stem not only from the betas that we had the last couple of weeks on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC, but we're also going to take a look at some other isolated incidents in where I got to play Call of Duty World War II, such as at E3, where it was a little bit more of a private event. It wasn't open entirely to everybody in the world. Yes, it was a public event, but at that event, we got some weapons that we didn't actually see in the betas, that including both the times that I was at Sledgehammer for the early beta and everything that we saw throughout the three weekends with all the updates and everything like that. So there will be a couple of weapons in this list in which you haven't seen just yet or had your hands on, but I want to tell you guys a little bit about it so you can jump in and totally dominate with it. So that said, let's jump into our seven most reliable weapons within Call of Duty World War II. Now, first and foremost, I want to start out with one that is totally something you guys can recognize and one that I'm sure a lot of you guys have had your hands on experience with, if not all you guys, that being the PPSH. Now, of course, the Timeless Classic has made its way back into World War II. It's only natural that we see this classic come back to its native location, whereas we've seen it recently in a far future setting within Black Ops 3 and then before that not since the campaign of Black Ops and before that even in World at War. So that said its introduction to World War 2 introduces it with a different fire rate which is not as fast but still a very fast firing weapon that will rip through your enemies. It has decent damage, relatively good ammo with extended mags though honestly I do wish that it was at that 70 to 71 rounds per drum like we've seen in other variations of the games throughout the franchise but instead we have 52 for the time being with the round drum on the PPSH in World War II, but nonetheless, this thing is mobile, rips through people, and ends up being one of those weapons that is going to probably be the meta within World War II. We always see weapons that are really gravitated towards in different games. We've seen, say, the NB4 and K-Bar in Infinite Warfare, the VMP and M8 in Black Ops 3, the ASM-1 and the Ball 27 in Advanced Warfare, and so on and so forth. So, this is probably going to be one of those, and with the game seemingly being SM oriented from what we've seen thus far, it's quite possible this is one you run into on a very regular basis. Now, number two on the list is another SMG, which I think is more so an underrated weapon within World War II from what we've seen thus far, that being the Grease Gun. It's got low recoil, a stable rate of fire, and good damage, and though it's not as fast firing as, say, the PPSH, or the WAF, or the Type 100, or other SMGs like that, it is something in which it is controllable, easy to manage, and still, if you're accurate with those shots, can take down pretty much anybody. And one of the beautiful things about this is that the Grease Gun is a default weapon. So you have it right off the bat. You can just chug through enemies, rank up, all that good stuff with relative ease and at a cost that is almost nothing to you, simply because it's there by default. Other weapons like the PPSH, the Type 100, the WAF, all that kind of stuff, you're gonna need to rank up and grind out the levels, but this one is there immediately. And the third one that I wanna to talk to you guys about is actually one, once again, like we mentioned, that you have not had your hands-on experience with just yet, but I had a little bit of time with it out at E3, in which I got to play around with it a little bit, capture some footage, all that good stuff, this being the MP40. The one that a lot of people really thought we'd end up seeing within World War II's beta, but we did not, and we still don't know how it will be unlocked, whether it's something that is, once again, a higher ranking, or if it's gonna be something that is tied in with the division classified weapon at that max rank. We don't know just yet, but the MP40 has low recoil, stable rate of fire, and is incredibly mobile. This was one of those weapons that I absolutely loved to run around with within my gameplay experience out at E3, and it proved to be one that was very versatile in terms of range, that damage drop off, and being able to take out enemies both close quarters and at longer ranges, but again, still not necessarily assault rifle range. That's the only downside to this is that it's not as comparable, perhaps, compared to other SMGs where they could 
potentially rival some assault rifle range. It still does though have a decent range, so it will be good for the majority of medium sized maps as well as the smaller. And number four is going to be the final SMG in which we'll talk about here at this one, though of course one could totally argue that all the SMGs that we saw thus far are very much so contenders for some of the most reliable weapons, but this one we're going to be talking about is the M1928 or the Thompson. Now we've talked about this in depth many times here across the channel, both in design aspects, design quirks, all that kind of stuff, but when you break it down, it really comes down to being a great weapon. It's one of the more faster firing SMGs within World War II, and of course that allows you to rip through enemies at close quarters. Now of course the magazine with extended mags is definitely where I'd like to go with this in terms of it. I don't necessarily like the stick mags. I ended up running out of ammo a little bit too fast for my own comfort, but nonetheless that really comes down to personal preference and personal play, but if you want a very solid and very viable option for close quarters play, and of course maybe even some medium range engagements as well, the M1928 is a surefire weapon here to go for. Now of course, like I mentioned, we could totally throw in the WAF and the Type 100 as well. The Type 100 is a very solid weapon too, may I add, but for the sake of not adding every single SMG into this, those are the ones that I found really the most reliable in almost all situations. Now, moving over into some different classifications, we're going to start out with another one at the number five position, in which is the same scenario that you guys haven't really played around with it, but I got a little bit of hands-on experience with this as well at E3, that being the BAR or the BAR or the Browning Automatic Rifle, whatever you want to refer to it as, this is probably the best rifle that I saw within Call of Duty World War II at that time. Now, maybe since E3, which was an either early beta build or still alpha build of the game itself, maybe it's been toned down a little bit, maybe it's been a little bit more balanced and tuned for the general playstyle of how the weapons will work within World War II, but at the time of using it, it was a relatively slower firing rifle, but that did not actually do any damage to how it played itself. This was one in which it ended up doing tons of damage. The range itself did not seem to have too much of a hindering drop off. The recoil was absolutely controllable and basically every attribute I felt played very well into how the weapon itself acted in gameplay experiences. It was one that even rivaled some SMGs in close quarters encounters and that's something that's with a rifle you know is not necessarily the best attribute for it. So to be able to rival in those situations is great. It just felt to me like one of the most overall versatile weapons within World War II. Now, without caring too much on about it, we're gonna go over to another rifle, that being one that you definitely have played around with, that being the STG-44. This is one in which I think it is a nice little hybrid between what we've seen in terms of the bar's fire rates, as well as the M1941. The M1941 seemed a little bit too fast for the ammo capacity that it had, but the STG with a little bit of a slower fire rate compared to that, but still faster than the bar, and with 30 rounds in the magazine, it felt like a nice little compromise between the two highs and lows in terms of that. Now, as for damage, it was a standard damage between all the rifles that we ended up playing around with, and that being said, it was one, though, that had decent range on top of it and could be very versatile in terms of how the playstyle itself worked out. But overall, I felt like it was a very viable option for a lot of scenarios, probably not as great as the bar, I think, but still one that was very well suited for a majority of scenarios that you run in contact with. Now, the final weapon that I want to talk about here with this one deals with the sniper classification, and that being the M1903 or the Springfield, as you guys may recognize it. This is one in which we've had a little bit of hands-on experience with a couple of snipers within the World War II betas, and though they are different in their own ways, one was a semi-automatic, one was a bolt action as well, but the M1903 outclassifies both the other options that we had in my books as well. It had higher damage, a decent fire rate in terms of comparable shots compared to the other snipers, and while with a little lessened aim assist, it was one that still probably had the lasting damage impression that a lot of players were looking for. So, in my books, this was one that definitely stood out amongst the crowd, especially in the sniper rifle classification. While we'll probably have one, maybe two more snipers given to us at the full launch of the game, what we've seen thus far, this to me was head and shoulders above the rest of the competition. So that said, that's going to round out the seven most reliable weapons in my books in World War II that I've played with thus far. Now, of course, you guys could totally have differing opinions, and that's totally cool. And if so, let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. Which weapons were your favorite? Which do you think are the most reliable here out of World War II with the betas or anything that you saw out of, say, E3 or anything pre-beta that we had in terms of access to gameplay with these other weapons? Let me know your thoughts down 
down there in the comment section down below. Once again, this is all subjective and very well could have differing opinions. I personally really felt bad for leaving out the Type 100 and the WAF, but to me, the other ones just had a little bit more of a leg up on them. But that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe to stay up to date with everything we have here regarding Call of Duty World War II. We're going to be killing it with the content coming as of recently. We're very close now to the launch of World War II. So if you guys are hyped, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a beat. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube. I practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. But all that said, Natalie, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. Mine has been Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.